Very late last night at 1 a.m. in the Virginia State Legislature, this man, a Virginia prosecutor, a father, a former Top Gun Navy fighter pilot, had his nomination to become a judge, to be a low-level Virginia state judge, rejected by the Virginia legislature. He had bipartisan sponsorship. His nomination had passed committees in the House and committees in the Senate. But when it came down to the final vote, he needed 51 votes to pass, and he got nowhere near that. He only got 33 votes. His nomination just got clobbered. His boss in the prosecutor's office, the Richmond state attorney, responded to the vote by saying, it's hard to think about what happened in the General Assembly and not conclude that it's a form of bigotry. The prosecutor called it an embarrassment for the state of Virginia. All 31 votes against the judicial nomination for this prosecutor, Tracy Thorne Begland, came from Virginia state Republicans. And the only objection raised to this judicial nomination was the fact that the nominee is gay. 31 no votes, all from Republicans, and now he will not be a judge. Virginia Democrats say they are livid. Quote, the blatant prejudice that Republicans displayed last night should have no place in our government. The GOP took Virginia back to the bigotry and mean-spirited prejudice of the 1960s. I thought we had made more progress toward a just society than this. Mr. Thorne Beglin's qualifications for appointment to the bench were unimpeachable, but Republicans cynically voted against his appointment just because he was gay. Statements from Virginia Democrats. That happened last night. That vote happened last night at 1 in the morning in Virginia. In Lincoln, Nebraska last night, the city council there voted for gay rights. They voted to pass a citywide non-discrimination measure for Lincoln that includes sexual orientation. But when I say they voted for it, what I mean by they is the non-Republicans on the Lincoln, Nebraska city council. The only Republicans on the city council did not vote, citing conflicts of interest while everybody else voted for it. In Colorado last night, for the second time, the Republican Speaker of the State House did some amazing gymnastic legislative maneuvering to avoid the threat that not marriage rights, but civil unions would be approved by the Colorado State Legislature. Civil unions actually have majority support, not only in the state as a whole, but in the legislature. But the Republican House Speaker took matters into his own hands to block it from coming up for a vote, thereby killing it last night. Even as public opinion, and even Republican public opinion, changes in the United States to become more friendly toward gay rights, Republican policy, what Republican elected officials do in office, is still really, really anti-gay. Colorado Republicans' position, uh, which is also Mitt Romney's position, which is not only should there be no marriage rights for gay people, but no civil unions either, that is a position that's now only held by 33% of the public. No civil unions and no marriage rights. But Republicans in office do not seem to care. This has been their agenda forever, and they are sticking to it. There is, there, there is a weird trend, though, that is worth watching among Republican officials who have national aspirations. Republican officials who are speaking to the whole country are still technically espousing all of the same anti-gay positions. The positions are staying the same, but they've started talking about themselves as if they don't hold those positions. This is also sometimes called lying when you talk about yourself as not holding a position you actually hold. Right now, for example, in the case of Governor Ultrasound, Virginia Governor Bob McDonnell, uh, it, it sort of feels, feels like, like the guy's just losing the thread. He's losing his own thread. Uh, listen, listen to this. This is how he reacted to the unfolding drama of that judge in Virginia, that would-be judge in Virginia, being voted down in the legislature with all those votes against him coming from Republicans, specifically because he's gay. Governor McDonnell's office put out a statement responding to that, saying... The governor has long made clear that discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation is not acceptable in state government. That's not true. He's made no such thing clear. Back in the real world of his real record before he decided to whitewash it like this, do you want to know what Bob McDonald did? One of the very first things he did when he became governor of the great Commonwealth of Virginia is that he rescinded the anti-discrimination executive order that had been put into place by the previous governor, by the Democrat, Tim Kaine. Bob McDonnell rescinded the anti-discrimination policy of the previous governor and put into place a new one. The only difference between the old one and the new one was that he took sexual orientation out of it. So one of his first acts as governor was to make it okay to fire somebody in Virginia because they're gay. He didn't make it through a full month in office before he felt the need to do that. Less than a month later, after a little bit of an uproar, he did half backtrack on the issue, saying that even though he was taking sexual orientation off the list of prohibited discrimination in the state of Virginia, he thought that under federal law, that kind of discrimination might not be seen as rational. He didn't put the protections for gay people back in his state that he took away. He just said federally, maybe they'll take care of it. 
When Bob McDonald was in the state legislature, when he was chair of the Justice Committee in the House, he actually said he wasn't so sure people should be allowed to be judges if they're gay. If a person might engage in, quote, certain homosexual conduct, Bob McDonald told a Virginia newspaper that that would, quote, certainly raise some questions about the qualifications to serve as a judge. Bob McDonald has been super anti-gay in terms of policy and his public positions the whole time he's been a public figure. But now he wants you to believe that he has long made clear that discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation is acceptable. That is absolute bull. <laughs> it's absolutely 100% bullpucky. But it is amazing to see it, right? And it is politically interesting that he feels like he has to say that because he now has national vice presidential aspirations. The same thing is happening right now with the Republican Party as a whole. It's fascinating. I mean, it might just be that Reince Priebus, the chairman of the Republican Party, is not that good at his job and sometimes gets confused when near a microphone. But if you give him the benefit of the doubt and you assume that he knows what he's doing, the chairman of the Republican Party said something this weekend that's mind-bending. It's bull. It is totally untrue. But it is interesting that he feels like he has to tell this particular lie. Do you believe that gays and lesbians in America deserve equal rights? I think they deserve equal rights in regard to, say, discrimination in the workplace, mm -hmm. issues such as, as Mitt Romney has pointed out numerous times, uh, hospital visitations. I mean, I think that in the, in the, in the, for the sake of dignity and respect, sure. Aw, except that's not actually your position, and that's not Mitt Romney's position. The Employment Non-Discrimination Act, which has been around and not getting passed by Congress for almost 20 years, would ban discrimination in the workplace on the basis of sexual orientation. It says you can't get fired because you're gay. Most Republicans are against it. The Republican Party is against it. Mitt Romney is not for it. He is against it. Quote, I don't see the need for new or special legislation. We reached out to the Republican Party today to ask whether the party, through its chairman, was unveiling some surprise new position on this issue, either for the Republican Party itself or for Mitt Romney as well. Uh, we have not heard back from them. And frankly, I don't expect to hear back from them because they don't want to change their policy on any of these issues. They just want you to think that maybe they have changed their policies. They do not want to change their position. They are just now, in America today, they are just now embarrassed about what their position is. So they want to keep doing what they're doing, but they don't want you to notice, and they don't want you to ask about it, and they certainly don't want you to think about it when you vote.